What factors actually affect photosynthesis? If we look at the equation, we look at what's going on, the stuff that's actually needed for photosynthesis. We needed light. The gas it used was carbon dioxide. And we needed water, H2O. We need these three things, and each of those can affect photosynthesis. If we look at light first, we draw a graph of the amount of light. Light intensity for the amount of light, good science words. And the rate, or speed, of photosynthesis. I think we'd all agree, more light, more light, more light. Photosynthesis goes faster. We get to a point now where it can't go any faster. It's going as fast as it can. We hit limiting factors and it levels off. So you could argue more light is better up to a certain point where it stops having an effect. We can also look at carbon dioxide concentration. As we get more and more carbon dioxide concentration, rate of photosynthesis, more carbon dioxide, it goes faster and faster and faster till again, you get to a point where it can't use it any quicker and then it's level. People often ask, how does that happen? Think about a April Fool's Day prank. I arrive at school, sneaky hires put a pile of gravel, of small stones in the middle of my lab. We have to empty the lab before we can actually do anything. We're sitting here taking handfuls of gravel, throwing it out the window on the school garden, takes forever. In comes the smart guy. He's got a shovel. Using a shovel, it'd go faster. If we had two shovels, would it be even faster? Three shovels, even faster. Well, we get to a point where you can't fit any more shovels around the gravel, though. So at the beginning, as you get more and more shovels, you know, thing for digging, the more of these you have, the faster it goes. But you're going to get to a point where no more can actually have an effect because we're totally surrounding the pile working. And at that point, it doesn't matter how many more shovels we get, the speed will stay the same. So that's why it levels off. You get to a point where even if you've got more stuff, you can't use it. And finally, water. Well, how does water affect photosynthesis? What's a plant going to do if there's not enough water? It's actually going to close. If we take a leaf, badly drawn, and we look at a tiny little piece of that leaf, we'll see something looking like this. This is a badly drawn stomata. You've got the hole in the centre, and you've got the guard cells. These are open so that, well these do open so that water vapour can move out of the plant. If there's not much water, what would a sensible plant do? Close the holes to stop losing water so you don't dry out and die. What's the problem when you close the holes? You can't get carbon dioxide in to do photosynthesis. You can't make food, does that mean you'd eventually die? So closing the holes is a short-term solution. Closing the stomata would be a better way to put that. Is a short-term solution until conditions are better. If I'm going to be a bit rude, it's like holding your breath when someone farts. It makes things great in the short term, but if you do it for long, you die. So it's a short-term solution when you can. Now, the last factor that can affect photosynthesis is temperature. We've probably got a pretty good idea now that if it's too cold, a reaction is really slow. Now obviously you guys would have units and everything else, but as things go faster, we'd expect the reaction to speed up. What happens if you get too hot? You'd expect it to slow back down, and you'd end up with an optimum or maximum. Now this is what we expect. In the real world, it's actually very similar to this. In the real world, you get a gradual increase, a big increase, a slowdown to your optimum, and then when it gets too hot, very rapid stopping of working. We have names here. We call the maximum point there the optimum, which is really just flash science words for best temperature. So this suggests plants have a range. This plant here, it can probably survive well between about that temperature and that temperature. Any colder, it's not doing photosynthesis and making food. So this is the comfort range of our plant. I guess that's why in Qatar, we get a lot of plants in the winter growing and not so many growing in the summer. It gets up to 50 degrees, that's just too hot. Why does this happen? 
It's all about enzymes, which we will learn about next year. Enzymes controlling the reaction, changing shape when they get too hot.